John, an important ankle here, and how much of a hit are we talking? Well, th thanks for having me. And I, and I would say tech office leasing has been one of the few remaining bright spots in the office market over the past several years. And last year accounted for 22% of office leasing uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, in, in the recent quarters. So when we're talking about companies who are doing large expansionary leases, often in big developments, and now they're cooling off and hiring, that, that could be a major issue for the office REITs. And you have three in particular, JBG Smith, Kilroy, and Vornado. How much of their exposure is to tech, do you think? Uh, the biggest would be Kilroy. They're a very uh, West Coast-focused uh, office REIT. JBG Smith is developing the area around um, Amazon HQ2 in, in D.C. And Vernado, their largest tenant right now is Meta, and they have a big development here uh, in New York where you would think a lot of that expansionary space would be taken up, up normally by tech companies. And so as you look at those three or across the office re uh, universe, metaverse, whatever, verse, um, <laughs> what kind of of earnings impact or revenue impact could this pullback have for them? Well, I mean, the nice thing about Office is there are long-term leases. Typically, about 5 to 10 percent of the leases expire every year. So it is relatively safe from a cash flow perspective. Mm -hmm. We may see some lease terminations occur if, if companies decide they don't need the space anymore or, uh, in some cases, go bankrupt. But it's really about the, the perception of the companies and their growth profile. So, again, a lot of these companies have been growing a lot through developments. That's been the one bright spot in, in all the office REITs. And if those developments aren't able to attract tenants, then, then uh, that can impact do they valuations. Build those, do has. they build those developments on spec? In other words, in the assumption that, uh, working under the assumption that there are going to be tenants who are going to fill them? Uh, typically not. Typically, they would be leased anywhere between 20 to 50 percent. So there has been some constraints on spec developments throughout this last cycle. Right. But it's that remaining 50 that typically gets the higher rents, and uh, there's no certainty that's going to happen. Right. What about the exposure overall, John? I mean, would you say that REITs, because of higher rates and some of the hits we've been talking about, you know, office REITs, I guess, should do, do well? Maybe, to, like, just talk us through the macro factors here and how that leaves you feeling overall about the space with the asterisk that obviously the tech exposed ones are going to be the underperformers, you think? Sure. I mean, real estate in general is an inflation hedge. So as costs go up, that means there's going to be less new supply. Typically, rents will increase during that time frame. So that scenario is still playing out. But office came into uh, you know into COVID already with a lot of a lot of struggles, given um, higher occupancy, higher capex, uh, questions on tenant demand outside of the big tech companies that were expanding. And so that the concerns on on office have really you know accelerated as have a lot of things during COVID. And now we're seeing that pullback in tech demand that that really takes a leg out of the stool for for growth for some of these office rates.